We've divided uh, XI robotic hysterectomy into five or six separate segments. Step one is the adnex and round ligament. And it starts by first taking the salpinx by grabbing in the middle of it and pulling up. This is a bipolar grasper, a large. It's a new instrument from XI and incorporates all the qualities of both the PK and the Maryland improves. It's longer, it's stronger, it has more teeth, has a better rounder tip for dissecting. It's got more tensile strength. I, I think you'll really like it. I start in the middle and I use the bipolar energy. I try to minimize the amount of cautery I use. Um, and I go ahead and march it down toward the fimbriated end, taking the entire fallopian tube off the ovary and back the other way. This, this technique works really well. I didn't have my assistant lifting up while I did that, which uh, was not optimal. I recommend you have the person that's manipulating the uterus do that. We then take the round ligament, and uh, I want you to watch this. I'm going to cauterize a wide amount of tissue here, at least th two or three widths of this instrument. What you want to leave behind is the least amount of char as possible. So I do that with one-third, two-third. I leave behind uh, one third of the thermal artifact, and I, the rest of the charred tissue is part of the um, uterus that's being removed. That way, you limit the amount of thermal artifact left behind, which I think translates out into pain um, to the patient. This is using the monopolar hook uh, in combination with the vessel ciliar, which, by the way, creates the least amount of thermal spread to the normal tissues. It's uh, thought to be one to two millimeters wide of thermal artifact. You can really see that in this example here, just how minimal ther thermal artifact there is. Same kind of idea where I use the hook to pull on the mesosalpinx on the middle of the fallopian tube to create that counter traction. And then I use the vessel sealer to take the entire tube off. The hook is always used to push up on the uterus and to give traction and counter-traction. person lifting up on the uterus plays an important role here. I'm making sure that that ovary is lifted way off the pelvis so we can see that the ureter is very deep and out of the way here. I'm actually going to mark right there just to remind me, hey, listen, i got to stay away from that when I'm closing the cuff. And I'm lifting up away from that when I'm taking the uterine ovarian ligament with the vessel ciliar headed toward the round ligament that I've already dissected open earlier from the other side. When I did the anterior broad ligament from the other side over. And that's how simple this is, using the vessel cylinder hook. Notice how I use that right hand to pull down. Always use both hands. Know where your ureters are. You can see that the ureter is at the IP ligament there very close. You want to know exactly where that is. This is the XI single site platform. I want to make sure that as I take this infundibular pelvic ligament that I am being careful not to injure that ureter. And I'm going to use these bipolar fenestrated as I cauterize and I'm going to pull up and create a lot of traction and try to leave behind minimal amount of um, thermal artifact or traumatized tissue. See that one-third, two-third technique? And we're going to take that round ligament. That's what one-third, two-third as well. You leave behind one-third and take the two-thirds that's attached to the uterus. This is an example of where that zero-degree scope is hard over big uteri. I've switched it over to a 30-degree down. I really like using the 30-degree scope now. It's my favorite uh, way to do hysterectomies because I have more versatility. I can be 30 degrees down or I can be 30 degrees up with a flip of a switch and I can rotate it right or left to see around things. I've found that I like the angled scope better. I'm taking the round ligaments on both sides on this large specimen. This is a really wise trick when you have a large uterus. Sometimes the round ligaments hold the uterus deep in the pelvis. Another thing you want to do is you want to reestablish normal anatomy. I'm using the monopolar hook and I'm dissecting the scar tissue of this ovary against the uterus first before taking the uterine ovarian ligament. I think when you reestablish normal anatomy, you get into less trouble. I'm even going to release, see how the ureter is kind of being pulled up a little bit? 
I'm going to release some of that scar tissue up against the ovary down a little bit. Release that ovary, decrease the chances of that ureter being too close.